Major funding for these programs is made possible by grants from Chase Commercial Term Lending and Capital One Bank, New York Community Bank, the Wickoff Group, MNT Bank, Perfect Building Maintenance, Genova Burns, Jean Tomasi and Webster, Greenberg Traurig, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company. Additional funding is provided by grants from AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, Aerial Property Advisors, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Layumi USA, Briarwood Organization, CBRE, Colliers International NYC, CPEX Real Estate Services, Cushman and Wakefield, Customers Bank, DDG, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, First Nationwide Title Agency, Flushing Bank, Friedman, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, Happ Investment Developers, Herrick Feinstein, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Chairman USRealty.com, John Katsimides, Red Apple Group, Margolin Weiner and Evans, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Matone Group, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, New Banks, People's United Bank, SJP Properties, Sterling and Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, TD Bank, Terra CRG, the CUNY TV Foundation, the Continuum Company, Urban American, and these friends. Brooklyn, the home of the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn, really the other story, the home of Brooklyn, 1834. Brooklyn, a kid grows up, you know, goes to Lafayette High School, goes to Kutcher's uh, sports camp. I mean, you know, Peru College, you know, tries to play basketball. He thinks he's good enough to play basketball. Gets into the real estate, he gets into works at Surrey and stores, gets into the real estate business, gets the MBA to sign up a score, gets the, the, the Nets to, to take off a space, gets them to get into a player's arena. I got my buddy, the legendary boy from Brooklyn, the other legendary boy from Brooklyn, Glenn Markman, who's the executive vice president of Cushman and Wayfield. Thanks for being here today. Oh, my greatest pleasure, Michael. Thanks. So let's talk about Grandpa, okay? Uh -huh. Grandpa was what we would say a pharmacist who used to make compounds. So tell me about Markman drugs. All right, so the first Markman drug was a building that my dad grew up in, in East Flappish on 91st Street in Winthrop. They lived in a four-story walk-up building. And in about the 1920s, my grandfather, Elliot, opened up Markman drug in the ground floor of this building. Now. I happened to come from a long line of pharmacists because my dad, my dad's brother, and even my grandfather on my mother's side were all pharmacists. So, so that was the original. That Markman was the original, drug. original Markman drug. And then in 1962, which happens to be the year I was born, my dad, with his brother and his dad, opened up at 1683 Bedford Avenue, right across the street from Ebbets Field frustrated from the Jackie Robinson projects, um, Markman Drug. Because Ebbets Field was changing, the neighborhood was yeah. changing, and your dad is there. You had Brutus the dog? You know, this is a tough time, 70s in New York City, and there were a lot of break-ins in the store. There were a lot of robberies. And we had this great German Shepherd, this beautiful dog. And we'd take him home uh, during Russia Shutter and Young Kippur when the drugstore would close. Uh, and one night, about 3 o'clock in the morning, my dad gets his telephone call from the police that the store was broken in and that he needed to come down there. And when he got to the store, there was a bunch of sticks that obviously the guys who broke into the store had used to, you know, 
control Brutus. After that night, my dad said, time out, getting ready to store. And he closed it down and he went to work for Pathmark Pharmacy. You were born, as you said before, when Markman Drug was on Bedford Avenue. So it's 1962 and you, you, you're born and you grow up in, what do we call this the, the, the Bensonhurst neighborhood? Is that yeah. the, the real term? Okay. Uh, yeah. it, it was true Bensonhurst. Right. Bensonhurst you know, was all about Jews living in an apartment and building and Italians, Italians living in the two and three family houses around Contello Towers. That was the name now, of the Contello building. Contello Towers was a Mitchell Lama, right? Mitchell Lama building uh, where if you had a good job in the building, maybe it was a family that had two school teachers. This was not the Upper East Side. This this was... Uh, it was a modest house. Modest. Okay, I, that your mother, your father, and your brother later on, younger brother, yeah. all live in their thing. So tell me, how, how did your mother meet your father? They met, Karen and Marty met, uh, when they were visiting a mutual friend who happened to be in a hospital. And that's where they were saw each other for the first time, ended up getting together. As I told you, my dad grew up in East Flappish. My mom grew up in Bensonhurst on Bay Parkway. She also went to, we'll get to the high school I went to perhaps, but she went to Lafayette High School. And uh, she was at a time there uh, when Stanley Koufax was going to Lafayette and Paul Savino and... Uh, when Lafayette oh, was Lafayette. Lafayette was La was not far from the legendary L and B pizzeria. Not that's I mean, that, 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 that was that was over there. That's so, so let's talk about growing up in Brooklyn. Now yeah. you, you told me one of your first jobs was you know the, you delivered the uh, the New post York, the New York a Post and at that time the post subscription was a dollar eighty a week. That's and right. What did you get? All right, so. We lived in on apartment number 7G, and outside my front door, outside the front door, would be about 75 New York posts stacked up. And these buildings that we lived in, Cattell Towers, were 16-story buildings. So my job was to distribute, because the post was distributed in the afternoon at the time, to all the apartments. And then Fridays were the nights I collect up, collect the money. Collection day. Baby. Yeah, it was a big day, because I had to pay to post, and they have to collect the money. And so you're in it for the tips. And so I would get from some people nothing, from other people 20 10 cents, cents to, or somebody would round it up to two, it, here's two bucks. The good things about living in the Bensonhurst neighborhood was the legendary, and it still exists, the JCH. Yeah. The JCH was uh, on 79th Street and Bay Parkway. And it was run by a guy named Coach Gold, Milton Gold. He treated the basketball program at the J as though he w this was UCLA in the 70s under John Wooden. His players had the best uniforms, best travel, best facilities. And there was a, a long history of the JCH winning national championships against all the teams all over the country. I was fortunate that when I was very young, my dad brought me to the J. And that began the love affair for me, my first true love of basketball. And basketball and the J, and ultimately Kutch's Sports Academy, is how I got out of Contello Towers. Because what I learned from basketball was all the lessons that I have learned and have demonstrated throughout life. Because you just don't win without preparation. Coach Gold believed that if you're representing the team, you have to wear a tie, and I'm sorry I didn't wear a tie today, Michael, but you had to wear a tie, you had to be, if the bus was leaving to go to a game at nine o'clock in the morning, that bus pulled out at nine o'clock in the morning. So I learned never to be late. I learned the importance of being prepared. I learned the importance of winning, and I was a point guard, and a point guard makes everybody happy. That's so different than what a good broker should do. And so it gave me an opportunity to find that thing that I, that I loved, that I was passionate about, that I cared about, and that ultimately all the lessons were used in business from basketball. And so the Jay played this huge 
part. And then my dad, I and mean, we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, and your dad uh, sent you to the Kutches. legendary Coaches, where Kutches, you met Coach Coach B. Coach uh, B, who Claire B, the world re renowned coach, yeah. who was the coach for LIU later LIU on. LIU, and one of the true basketball geniuses. He invented the the one three one defense. He was came up with the idea of the three second violation, and he also won the NCAA and the NIT. And somehow, I, I think I was young. This is, uh, I know I was young. It was, it was 1970, I'm seven turning eight. And I got a little homesick. And Coach took a real interest, Coach B took an interest in me. And he started sharing with me and teaching me basketball from like a science and showing me plays and introducing me to Frank McGuire and all these coaches that would come through coaches. And then one day he introduced me to Walt Frazier. And this is 1970. Clyde had just won the, the championship with the Knicks. Wait, would you think you were Clyde today getting dressed up like this? <laughs> Looks a little like Clyde. Clyde would be proud. Uh, and so that began what has maintained a 44-year relationship with, with Clyde because somehow I became that kid that when he was demonstrating how to make a chess pass, how to do a bounce pass, I was the guy he, he uses the model. In addition to working over there, uh, you also worked at a hardware store or something called? Famart. Famart. I was a stock boy in Famart, uh, which was on Avenue U. Uh, I also worked at a, a friend of mine who played at the JCH, Steve Cohen, had a, an electronics store on Fifth Avenue. And I worked a couple of years there learning yeah, that business. And, and that was, that introduced me to the whole Syrian community through to Jay, all these, it's, it's a long story. Yeah, but we got, but we, we, we'll we, move on. We'll move on. Okay, yeah. so you graduated Lafayette. I go and, to Baruch. And how did you decide to go to Baruch? Uh, Great school, part of the City University of New York. Part of CUNY, and I guess we're in CUNY right now. Right. Um, I wasn't a great student. Uh, Baruch was a tough school to get. It, it was a tough school. We lowered the standards to take in the they, basketball they, player? They, they, they lowered the standards probably. And, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And I didn't want to subject my parents to expensive education. And so I ended up going to Baruch and having a great experience you, there. When you're at Baruch and you're working at the, uh, the Syrian, Syrian store, the yeah. Syrian uh, electronic store uh -huh. on Fifth Avenue, you, you meet a woman by the name of Deborah? I met the, a woman the, by the name of, there, there were two things that were happening simultaneously. When I'm at Baruch, there was Studio 54 and Xenon were the big clubs at the time and they allowed me to have a lot of fun at night and that kept me loving New York City and, and being exposed to this like fantasy world. And then it's about 1983, I'm about to go into my senior year, maybe it must be 84, I'm going into my senior year at Baruch. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do for a living. And I'm on a ferry going to Fire Island with a bunch of my buddies, we're going to Ocean Beach or Ocean Bay Park. I meet this woman, Deborah Halpert. And we just start talking, she's very, very pretty, beautiful. And at first it was like, oh man, maybe I'm flirting with her. But in talking to her, uh, she starts telling me what she does for a living. I just asked her and it turns out she sold video space, she sold advertising space for Video Magazine. And it was like a light bulb went off there, video, advertising space. What, this is like a foreign language to me. What the hell does this all mean? And so by the end of this 30 minute ferry ride, I kind of, and I was always a curious guy. I got her business card and I and called. You were, and you were tenacious, you were tenacious and, and you, you, you got through to her and her and, boss and you were able to get a job yeah. selling advertising space, which was interesting because the advertising space related to what you had learned from working in the electronics store and you sold to the legendary 47th Street camera right, right. and then you sold to Adorama and a number executive of other, photo executive photo and the B&H and, and the, all, 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 of the, all of the crews which w relates going on. Yeah. So you graduate Baruch. I graduate Baruch. They at video said to me, we want you to stay. Don't go anywhere. We're, we're really happy with you. And uh, so I stayed. 
and I play in this basket. So I move into the city. It's now 1984. And I move into uh, 220 East 22nd Street, between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. I you run play, into, and you play Monday Night Space. I run right? into Rob Nelson, who's a buddy of mine who I played ball at the J, JCH. And he says, you know, we're starting a game on Monday nights on, in 19, uh, every night, 6 o'clock, Mondays. Why don't you come to the game? And there were all these real estate guys. There's Jeff Roseman, Rob Silver, Josh Kurloff. And I'm selling advertising space. And every year, these guys seem to be doing better and better. And I'm happy doing this advertising for a year or two. But one day, I say to Josh, just tell me what the hell. I, I really want to understand your, your world a little bit more. And I got a meeting with Josh and Earl Reese, who he worked for. And it was the first person I ever talked to about real estate. And seeing Earl, who I've maintained a, ni a nice relationship and see him from time to time on Madison Avenue, we just hang out on the park talking. Um, it gave me real interest in switching careers. But you, what you wanted to do is you were, because going into the real estate business was a commission business without right. anything. Right. So you worked hard and the, your former so, employers yeah. were nice enough to say, bring in the business so you had some money when you went out on your exactly. own. Exactly. So Deborah and the, the publishers, Jay Rosenfeld, uh, said to me, Glenn, we, we support you know, you're not going to a competitor, so we're, we're, we're thrilled, we're happy, we want to see you successful. Any, and it's a monthly magazine video, any advertiser you lock up for the year, we will pay you for the year. So I spent the next three or four weeks working my butt off, securing all these uh, long-term one-year contracts so I would have some breathing room when I went into real estate. So from that, that carried me a lot because when I entered in at William A. White, which became Grubb and Ellis, uh, I was making $200 a week, which basically which covered Which was your, too much. You didn't even deserve that. No, that, and I had to probably beg for the That's $200 a week. So what happens is when you're working over there, you learn the world of canvassing, yeah. or should we say walking the street. Oh. But that was prior to... 9-11 yeah. so you were able to walk into buildings oh. and knock on doors and try to get yeah. and one of your first the first deal which no one ever forgets in business was you got this employment agency yeah. MVP right yeah, yeah. M MVP the guy had a trophy on his on his you know reception desk and I would go in like any other pitch you know how many people work here do you have other offices when is your lease up all, all these questions that you know, a, a, a young person. And, and I got a meeting with the guy. Right. And next thing we're doing, a, a 2,000 square foot deal in a building on 46th Street owned by the guys from Dwayne Reed and uh, uh, Joey Cohn, who I, I knew that was my first 2,000 square foot deal. And then canvassing allowed me to walk into this really screwed up building. It was called 3242 Broadway, two buildings that were connected downtown. And I start at the top and I walk my way down and this company ADP was all over this building. I end up walking into this guy's office. I think his name was Marty Staff. I don't even know how I got into his office. Said, you guys are in like this crappiest building in, in downtown and, and, and you you're, in a, you're in like 10, I'm, I'm, I'm like 12 years old at the time right. also. I mean, and you had no idea what ADP was. No, I had I, I mean, ADP was the originator of automated payroll. Right. And you, yeah. you know, from that, that was your first that big was, deal. That, that was my that was, first, first big deal because but, we ended up doing a deal in New Jersey. New Jersey in, Sequ in uh, and Jersey City. Yeah, and what I learned, because I now I'm working at William A. White, I'm in the downtown office of 30 Broad Street. And I bring the two guys I work with, Ted Jackness and, and Jerry Richter, into the deal. But that's a big deal now because this is hundreds of thousands of square feet. So they make a phone call to Jerry Cohn and Charlie Borock, who run Midtown. So now we've got a lot of partners in it. And then we have to call the New Jersey guys, Ed Cohen and those guys, to be involved. Plus ADP took a piece of the, you know, was, so all of a sudden. But the, the best part was he did the deal. Let's, the best, let's move on. With the great, cents. all right, the, great, the greatest part is we did this deal and it made me feel great. But I also learned, you know what? You can do a big deal, but there's nothing wrong with doing small deals. Since you always loved b-ball, yeah. okay, one day you're riding in a taxi cab 
right. and you pass two things. You pass the Disney store and you pass the Warner store. Yeah. And you, th you say to yourself, you know what? NBA is making a lot of money on licensing of their equipment. And yeah. what do you do? So the kid from Brooklyn calls, calls up David, David Stern, Stern. And I said, you know, here's the story. I'm reading in the paper. You guys just generated billions of dollars in licensing. You guys should have a store. You're in the entertainment business. I got a secretary. A secretary says, look, this is the last thing they, the NBA wants to do. But Bill Doherty, he's our guy for marketing. Talk to Bill. She just pushed me off to Bill. Called Bill. Get him a little bit excited. And it's hard to believe. But after a number of months of talking to Bill, I get my NBA contract. I get my dream job. I'm at the NBA, and now... We are representing so, them. So you open up the NBA store, store at 666 Fifth Avenue, Avenue. 35,000 square feet. We pay $2.8 million a year. We sign a lease for 15 years. It is, let's, the, it is I wait. mean, you can't rent let's, a... But let's yeah. get, now, I know you're the kid from Brooklyn, right. but you didn't know what downtown Brooklyn was, okay? You right. didn't work in the Syrian All stores. Right. Over. All right. How'd you get into the restaurant business? So in 92, my brother who, Greg is on a long path getting out of college, you know, a five-year thing, working in clubs, nightclubs, passing out invitations. He knows he's not going to put a suit on and go to work. He wanted to open up a restaurant. He sees in the business opportunity section this great potential site in Brooklyn Heights on Montague Street, and we start negotiating. Then we realize neither of us have any restaurant experience, but we love what the potential is here. So we find the partner, Nando who owns Cafe Bungusto, and just like that, he puts up 50% of the money, we put up 50% of the money, and then it was off to the races on, so on restaurants. So restaurant we opened up at 151 Montague Street, then my brother calls me one night and says, I love this corner on 84 Montague, it's corner of Montague and Hicks. Why don't you find out who owns the building? I call the owner who owns the building, he says, Amityville Shrink, he's in, you know, says, I, I call him, I say, you know, we have this other restaurant down the street, I love your corner, is there any way we can get a, get a, an opportunity to rent that space. He says, I know your restaurant. I know Cafe Bungus. I really like it. The only problem is I got a situation. I said, Dr. Alaska, what's your situation? He says, I got a tenant who hasn't paid me rent in a couple of years. I said, Dr. Alaska, let me come out and see you. Go out to see him in Amityville. I said, Dr. Alaska, I'll get your tenant out. I'll pay your legal fees. I'll do anything you want us to do. Just just know so if we get him out, give us a space. So, so that's when you open up that's the, the Heights Cafe. That's when we opened up the Heights Cafe, Heights which Cafe. ultimately led us to buying the Heights Cafe building and ultimately led us to then, buying the And how'd you get into the, uh, the pizza business afterwards? Um, so when we own a building, you have leases. We own the 84 Montague Street building. I had two tenants whose leases were rolling over. Actually, one who wasn't rolling over but wanted to leave, wanted to retire. And I said to my brother, what do you think? Do we let them out of the lease or do we? No. Did, and, and did so, you learn? So we have, an, we have a true, all right, like my, Jan, my wife's wife, last name is Testori. My brother's last name is, his wife's last name is Legere. We come from, you know, good roots of but red you, sauce. So red sauce. So, 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 we're, so, so we're. So you now have the Heights Cafe. We have Della Rocco's. So we, own the, we own these buildings. We have some tenants. We have there. some tenants. We can adjust. We can move. So let's, let's move back to Brooklyn because people uh -huh. consider you like the, the yeah. king of downtown Brooklyn. And, and you get involved with downtown Brooklyn, especially since you love the Nets. Yeah. You find them space in Metro yeah. Tech? Well, it's all about relationships. My whole business, my whole life has never been, like, there's people in my business who are just about the money. Mine is all about relationships. Brett Yarmark, who runs the, the Nets, I did his deal at NASCAR. So we're friends, and, and, and Bruce Mosler knows Brett really well. And so we start working with the Nets to find them a practice facility. And it was another one of those things that, it's Brooklyn, it's basketball, it's real estate, it's fantasy. Let's talk about Brooklyn 1834. Brooklyn 1834 is a media company, just like my um, family and my dad had a business with his family members and I'm now with my brother in the restaurants doing something with my wife. It's a media company, we've got three other partners, Stacy, Adam and Ron, and it's all about a collaborations. It's all about a platform for talented Brooklyn artists that we could export to the world. We're gonna be an ambassador. We're gonna be able to show off the talent that's happening in Brooklyn. 
so that's keeping me going. Just tell me a little All bit. All right. Jan. So Jan is this incredibly talented, beautiful. My wife, who's you met her amazing. Up in Rhode I Island. met her in Newport, Rhode Island, in 1990, and she is, you know, a, a great painter who put her career on hold to help build out this Brooklyn 1834 company. I've got two kids, my son Cleo, who is 19. He just finished his freshman year at Holy Cross. He's the one who's in the Navy, he's the, he's Navy the, ROTC. He's Navy ROTC, got some good news uh, this week. He's got a three-year scholarship. I am unbelievably so proud that's, that's, of, of my boy. And, and your daughter and, and my daughter is 16. She is unbelievably smart and talented and beautiful and I, uh, if anything that I'm proudest is of my children. I so, love my... So all, you know, all of this is, everything's good. You're building 1834. And Cushman and Wakefield. And, and, and Cushman and Wakefield. Things are going great right there. In 2002 and, that you've done well. But unfortunately, sometimes, you know, um, hammers come in out there or yeah. you know, a racket. So what happened uh, earlier so, this year? So March 7th, I um, got diagnosed with uh, esophageal cancer. And I mean, just those words are enough to kind of throw off your rhythm, to say the least. And I have a, um, I have a serious fight on my hands that I am dealing with and I am going to beat and I am fighting it. I finished my eighth round of chemo yesterday I am blessed because I have this amazing family. And as my son Cleo said the other day, we have this web of love and support around us. I'm going to fight this thing really hard, and I'm fighting this thing really hard. I've got a great team at Sloan. I've got a great uh, Eastern medicine person, Mitchell Gaynor, who's helping me. I've got a meditation person. I, I've, uh, as and, my and, family. And you have, besides this great family and friends, <clears throat> one of your friends, you know, my buddy who I always pick on, Bruce Mosler, has been like a, 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 it's great, like a, bro it's a brother to me. What he, he, he pulled something off the other day where. Brooklyn Hospital. Yeah. Right? Because you're, you're involved with the Downtown yeah. Brooklyn Alliance. Yeah. Um, and, and the Brooklyn Partnership and the Brooklyn Navy Yard and all these. So. So they asked me, Richard Becker, who runs the hospital, said, can we honor Bruce? I said, I'll make a phone call to Bruce. He gets, you know, the honor. And uh, little did I know that Jan, Bruce, and Richard concocted this plan that they're going to give me an award. I had no, I walked in thinking that I'm going to this boring real estate slant. I mean, I love Bruce, but right. I was, and, 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 and I, see, I see friends, then I see my parents. I see my kids, and I say, like, what, 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 are these, what is everyone doing? And it, they flipped it around, and Bruce selflessly gave me the, 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 honor, for you. the honor for me, which was just could, unbe unbelievable. So, so here's what I'm going to say. You're going to make that three-point play, and you're going to continue to survive, and I'm going to have you back on, this show, on the other show because you've been on my shows in Brooklyn, and I have certainty that the kid from Brooklyn will be around for many, many years to come. And thanks for being here. Thank you.